हरे कृष्ण माता जी हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण माता जी हरे कृष्ण Which chapter are we? Hare Krishna. I guess thirty nine. Hmm. Thirty nine or forty something. Hmm. Somebody can start with a pranam mantra. Yes, Mataji. O manyana to Miranda Sia, Nyana and Janisela Kaya, Chaksur Unmilitam Yena, just my Sri Guru Venema. Sri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam, Stapitam Yena Putale, Swayam Rupaya Kadamayam, the Danti Swapadanticum. Nama, O Vishnu Padaye. Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Iti Namini Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavati Vashyatarishatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shrivasa Digaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna I think, did we complete compassion in anger? Yes. Yes, Mataji, we completed it. 
Okay, I think next chapter we have to read, no? Yeah. Dread and ghastliness. This we haven't completed. Yes, yes. Yeah. Somebody can start. May okay. I start, Mataji? Yeah, Dikshit. Hare Krishna. Yes, Mataji. Dread. In ecstatic love for Krishna and dread, there are two causes of fear. Either Krishna himself or some dreadful situation for Krishna. When a devotee feels himself to be an offender at Krishna's lotus feet, Krishna himself becomes the object of dreadful ecstasy love. And when out of ecstasy love, friends and well-wishers of Krishna apprehended some danger on him, that situation became the object of their dread. When uh, Raksha, Raksha Raja was in front of Krishna fighting and suddenly realized that Krishna was a supreme personality of Godhead, Krishna addressed him thus, My dear Raksha Raja, why your face so dry? Please do not feel threatened by me. There is no need for your heart to tremble like this. Please calm yourself down. I have no anger towards you. You may, however, become as angry as you like with me to expand your service and fighting with me and to increase my sparkling attitude. In this dreadful situation, an ecstasy love for Krishna, Krishna himself is the object of dread. There is another instance of dreadful situation with Krishna as the object as follows. After being sufficiently chastised by child Krishna in the Yamuna river, the Kalya snake began to address the Lord. O killer of Murad Himan, I have acquired many mystic powers by my austerity and penances. But before you, I am nothing. I am most insignificant. Therefore, please be kind upon a poor soul like me. And don't be angry with me. I did not know your actual position. And out of ignorance, I have committed such horrible offenses. Please save me. I am most unfortunate, foolish creature. Please be merciful to me. This is another instance of the ecstasy of dread in devotional service. When the KC demon was causing disturbances in Brenda, by assuming a large horse body that was so big that he could jump over the trees. Mother Yashoda told her husband, Nand Maharaj, our child is very restless, so we had uh, better keep him locked within the house. I have been very worried about the recent disturbances of the KG demon who has been assuming the form of a giant horse. When it was learned that the demon was entering Gokula in an angry mood, Mother Yashoda became so anxious to protect her child and her face dried up and there was tears in her eyes. These are some of the signs of the ecstasy of dread in devotional service caused by seeing and hearing something that is dangerous to Krishna. After the Putana which had been killed, some friends of Mother Yashoda inquired from her about the incident. Mother Yashoda at once requested her friends, please stop, please stop, don't bring up the incident of Putana. I became distressed just by remembering this incident. The Putana which came to my devour my son, and she deceived me into letting her take the child on her lap. After that, she died and made a tumultuous sound with a gigantic body. In the ecstasy of devotional service in dread, the unconstitutional symptoms are drying up of mouth, exuberance, glancing behind oneself, concealing oneself, bewilderment, searching after the endangered, lovable object and crying very loudly. Some other un unconstitutional symptoms are illusion, forgetfulness, and expectation of danger. In all such circumstances, the ecstasy dread is the steady or constant factor. Such dread is caused either by offenses committed or by dreadful circumstances. Offenses may be committed in various of ways, and the dread is felt by the person who has committed the offense. When dread is caused by a fearful object, this fearful object is generally a person who is fearful fears are menace features, nature and influence. An example of an object that caused ecstasy dread in the Putana witch. Dread may be caused by mysterious demonic characters such as King Kamsa and it may be caused by great powerful demigods such as Indra or Sankara. Demons like Kamsa fear Krishna but their feelings cannot be described as ecstasy dread in devotional service. Ghastliness. It is understood the, from uh, authoritative sources that an attachment for Krishna because of feeling of disgust sometimes present a ghastly ecstasy in devotional service. A person uh, experiencing such ecstasy love for Krishna is almost always in the neutral stage of devotional service or santarasa. A description of ecstasy love caused by ghastliness is found in the following statements. This person was formerly interested solely in the matter of lust and sense gratification and he had perfected uh, the greatest skill in exploring women to fulfill his lusty desire. But now how wonderful it is that the same man is standing the names of Krishna with tears in his eyes. As soon as he sees the face of a woman, he immediately becomes disgusted. From the indication of his face, I would think that now he hates sex life. In this mellow of devotional service and ghastliness, the sub, um, sub ecstasy symptoms are spitting upon the consideration of one's past life, contorting the face, covering the nose and washing the hands. There are also trembling of the body, forcible twisting in the body and perspiration. Other symptoms that may be present are shame, exhaustion, madness, illusion, frustration, humility, self-pity, restlessness, eagerness, and stunning of the body. When a devotee lamenting for his past about 
abominable activities such special symptoms on his body so feeling is called ecstasy in devotional celebrities and gastiness this is caused by the awakening of his krishna consciousness in this uh, connection there is the following uh, statements how can a person take pleasure in the enjoyment of sex life in his body with a bag of skin and bonds filled with blood and covered by skin and flesh and which produces smokers and evil smells this uh, perception is possible only for one who is awakened to krishna consciousness and who has become fully cognizant of the abominable nature of his material body a fortunate child in the womb of his mother prayed to krishna as follows o enemy of kamsa i am suffering so much because of uh, this material body now i am trapped with a mess of uh, blood urine and liquid stool with the womb of my mother because i am living in such a condition i am suffering a great pangs therefore uh, o divine ocean of mercy please be kind to me i have no ability to engage in your loving devotional service but please save me there is a similar statement by a person for an hellish condition of life he addressed the supreme lord thus my dear lord Your Maharaja has placed me in the situation that is fully of filthy and obnoxious smells. There are so many insects and worms surrounded by the stools left in different kinds of diseased persons. And after seeing the horrible scene, my eyes have become sore and I am becoming nearly blind. I therefore pray, O oh my Lord, O oh deliver me from the hellish conditions of the life. I have fallen into this hell, but I shall try to remember your holy name always. And in this way, I shall try to keep my body and soul together. This is another instance of ecstasy love for Krishna in an abominable situation. It is to be understood that any person who is constantly engaged in chanting the holy names of the Lord, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, has attained transcendental affection for Krishna. And as such, in any condition of life, he remains satisfied simply by remembering the Lord's name in full affection and ecstasy love. In conclusion, it may be stated that ecstasy love for Krishna and gasliness appears during the development of dormant neutrality into developed aff- affection. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Whatever way, perfection is there for Krishna. Mixing of rasas. Yes. Mixing of Krishna Mataji. Yes, Vaishnavi. Start. Yeah. As already described, there are 12 different kinds of rasa. or ecstatic relationship that are shared with krishna five of these rasas are direct and they are listed as neutrality servitude eternal love but um, parental love and conjugal love seven of the rasas are indirect and they are listed as humor astonishment chivalry compassion anger dread and ghastliness the Five direct rasas are eternally manifested in the Vaikuntha world, the spiritual kingdom, whereas the seven indirect rasas are eternally manifesting and unmanifesting in Gokula Vrindavan, where Krishna displays his transcendental pastimes in the material world. Very often, in addition to one's regular rasa, there is found the presence of some other rasa. and the mixture of these loving humors in sometimes compatible or palatable and sometimes incompatible or unpalatable the following is a scientific analysis of the compatibility and incompatibility of the mixtures of these various rasas or loving me when in the rasa of neutral love shanta rasa there are found traces of ghastliness or astonishment the result is compatible when with the neutral love there are manifestations of conjugal love chivalry anger or dread the result is incompatible when in the ecstasy of a serving humor there are manifestations of dread neutral love chivalry such as dharma veera or dana veera the result is compatible the ecstasy of devotional love in chivalry yuddha veera and anger is directly produced by krishna himself with the ecstasy of fraternal love a mixture of conjugal love laughter or chivalry is highly compatible with the same fraternal love a mixture of dread or parental love is incompatible although there are gods of different uh, of difference between them with the ecstasy of parental affection a mixture of laughter compassion or dread is compatible with the ecstasy of parental love a mixture of conjugal love chivalry or anger is incompatible with the ecstasy of devotion in conjugal love a mixture of laughter and fraternity is compatible according to certain expert opinions in the ecstasy of conjugal love 
the feelings of chivalry known as yuddha veera and dharma veera are the only compatible edition according to this view except for these two humors all other manifestations are taken as incompatible with conjugal love with the ecstasy of devotional laughter a mixture of dread conjugal love or parental love is compatible whereas a mixture of compassion or ghastliness is incompatible with the ecstasy of devotion and astonishment a mixture of chivalry or neutral love is compatible whereas mixture of anger and dread is always incompatible with the ecstasy of devotional service Uh, sorry with the ecstasy of devotional chivalry a mixture of astonishment laughter or servitude is compatible whereas a mixture of dread or conjugal love is incompatible according to some expert opinion the ecstasy of neutral love is always compatible with devotional service in chivalry with the ecstasy of compassion in devotional service a mixture of anger or parental love in is compatible whereas a mixture of laughter conjugal love or astonishment is incompatible with the ecstasy of anger in devotional service a mixture of compassion or chivalry is compatible whereas a mixture of laughter conjugal union or dread is incompatible with the ecstasy of dread in devotional service a mixture of ghastliness or compassion is compatible with the ecstasy of chivalry in devotional service a mixture of conjugal union laughter or anger is always incompatible in the ecstasy of ghastliness in the devotional service feeling of neutral love laughter or servitude are compatible whereas feeling of conjugal union and fraternity are incompatible the above analysis is a sample of the study of rasa bhasa or incompatible mixing of rasa this transcendental science of rasa bhasa can thoroughly explain the humor of ecstatic love that are compatible and incompatible with one another when lord chaitanya mahaprabhu was residing in jagannath puri many poets and devotees used to come to him and offer their different kinds of poetry but the regulation of that uh, sorry But the regulation was that Lord Chaitanya's secretary Swarupa Damodara first examined all the all of these writings scrutinizingly, and if he would find that there were no incompatibilities in rasa or transcendental mellows, he would then allow the poet to approach Lord Chaitanya and recite his poetry. The topic of incompatibility is a very important one, and those. who are pure devotees always expect to find perfect compatibility in description of the different relationships with the personality of god the study of compatibility and incompatibility sometimes becomes very involved and a hint of why this is so is given as follows when a friend meets another friend the mellow produced out of that meeting is generally taken as very palatable but actually with such meetings between two friends there are so many feelings involved that it is difficult to ascertain when these feelings can actually become compatible or when they are becoming incompatible expert library scholars have analyzed the rasas that are compatible with one another by contrasting the various rasas in a particular mixture under the name whole and part according to this method the prominent feeling is called the whole and subordinate feeling is called the part the following statement elucidates the uh, the subject of part and whole all living entities are just like sparks from the supreme fire and as such i do not know if i a tiny spark shall be able to engage myself in the transcendental loving service of this supreme fire lord krishna in this statement the feelings of mutual love are taken as the whole whereas the desire to serve the lord is taken as part actually in the brahman brahman effulgence there is no chance for reciprocation of loving ecstasy between the lord and the devotee there is another quotation from a devotee who laments as follows alas 
I am still trying to relish different pleasurable states from this body, which is simply some skin covering mucus, semen, and blood. In this state of consciousness, I am so condemned that I cannot relish the transcendental ecstasy of remembering the supreme personality of Godhead. In this statement, there are two ecstatic loving humor, namely neutrality and ghastliness. Neutrality is taken as the whole and the ecstasy of ghastliness is a part. There is a similar statement by a devotee as follows. I shall now begin my service of planning the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Shri Krishna, who is seated on a golden throne. He is the Supreme Param Brahma in his eternal transcendental form of the cloudy blackish complexion. Now I shall give up my affection for my material body, which is nothing but a bunch of flesh and blood. Herein also there is the combination of servitude and ghastliness, whereas the ecstasy of servitude is taken as the whole and the ecstasy of ghastliness is taken as part. There is another statement as follows. When, when shall I be freed from the mode of ignorance? And being thus purified, when I shall attain the stage of serving Krishna eternally, only then, I, uh, only then shall I be able to worship him, always observing his lotus eye and beautiful face. In this statement, the whole is the ecstasy of neutrality and the part is servitorship. There is another statement as follows. Please look at these devotees of the Lord who is dancing just from remembering the lotus feet of Krishna. Simply by observing his dance, you will lose all interest in even the most beautiful woman. In this statement, the whole is in neutrality and the part is in ghastiness. One devotee boldly said, My dear Lord, now I am turning my face from any thought of association with young girls. As far as Brahman realization is concerned, I have lost all interest because I am completely absorbed in thinking about you. And being absorbed so blissfully, I have lost all other desires, even the desire of mystic power. Now, my mind is attracted only to worshipping your lotus feet. In the statement, the whole is the ecstasy of neutrality and the parties of chivalry. In another statement, Subala is, Subala is addressed thus, My dear Subala, the dancers of Vrindavan who had the opportunity to in, of enjoying Krishna's kissing must be the foremost of the all fortunate women in the world. In this example, the ecstasy of fraternal devotional service is the whole and the ecstasy of conjugal love is the part. The following statement is made was made by Krishna to the gopis. My dear enchanted, don't gaze at me with longing eyes like this. Be satisfied and return to your homes in Vrindavan. There is no necessity of your presence here. While Krishna was joking in this way with the damsels of Raja, who with great hope had come to enjoy the Rasa dance with Krishna with him, Subala was also on the sea. And he began to look at Krishna with wide and laughing eyes. Subala's feelings contain a mixture of fraternity and laughter in the devotional service. Fraternity is considered here to be as whole. And the laughter is considered the part. The following example contains a mixture of ecstatic fraternity and laughter taken respectively as whole and part. When Krishna saw that Subala in the dress of Radharani was silently hiding under the shade of a beautiful Ashoka tree on the banks of the Yamuna, he immediately aroused from his seat in surprise. Upon seeing Krishna, Subala tried to hide his laughter by covering his cheek. There is also an example of mixture of parental love and compassion and devotional service. When Mother Yashoda was thinking that her son was walking in the forest without any umbrella or shoes, she became greatly perturbed to think of how much difficulty Krishna must have been feeling. In this example, the whole is the parental love and the part is compassion. There is 
the following example of mixture of parental love and laughter a friend of mother yashoda told her my dear yashoda your son has very cunningly stolen a lump of butter from my house and to make me blame my own son for his mischief he has smeared some of the butter on my son's face while he was sleeping upon hearing this mother yashoda shook her curved eyebrows she could only look at her friend with a smiling face may mother yashoda bless everyone with the smiling attitude in this example the whole is the parental love and the part is the laughter there is example of mixture of several humans with devotional service as follows when krishna was holding up govardhana hill with his left hand his hair became scattered all over his shoulder and he appeared to be perspiring when mother yashoda saw this scene she began to tremble then as she started as she stared at the scene with broadened eyes she saw krishna begin to exhibit variety of facial caricatures mother yashoda then became very happy and began to smile then again when she thought that krishna was holding up the hill for such a extreme long time her clothes became soaked with perspiration may mother yashoda rajeshwari protect the whole universe by her infinite mercy in this example the whole is parental love and the part are dread wonder laughter compassion etc there is an there is an example of a mixture of conjugal love and fraternal affection when shrimati radharani said my dear friend just see how krishna is resting his hand on the shoulder of subala who is dressed up like just like a young girl i think he must be sending some message to me to subala the purport is that the superiors of radharani do not like krishna or his cowherd friends to associate with her therefore these friends sometimes clothe themselves in female dress so they can give radharani a message from krishna in this example the whole is conjugal love and the part is fraternity the whole uh, the following is an example of a mixture of conjugal love and laughter in devotional service krishna in the dress of young girl told radharani oh you hard hearted girl don't you know that i am your sister why are you unable to recognize me be merciful upon me and please capture my shoulder and embrace me with love while krishna was dressed up exactly like radharani he was speaking these nice words and shrimati radharani could understand his purpose but because she was in front of many her superiors she simply smiled and did not say anything in this instance the ecstasy of conjugal love is taken as the whole and ecstasy of laughter is taken as a part the following illustrate a mixture of several feelings when one of the consort friends of chandravali saw that krishna was preparing to fight with the vrishasura she began to think how wonderful krishna is his mind is captivated by the eyebrows of chandravali in a smiling spirit his snake like arm are on the shoulders of his friend and at the same time he is roaring like a lion to encourage vrishasura to fight with him this is an example of conjugal love fraternity and chivalry the conjugal love is taken as a part and the fraternity and chivalry are sorry the conjugal love is taken here as the whole and the fraternity and chivalry are taken as the part when kubja caught hold of krishna's yellow garment because she was feeling almost lusty with sex earlier krishna simply bowed down his head with his cheeks glowing in front of many people who were standing there and laughing this is an example of a mixture of ecstatic conjugal love and laughter the laughter is taken as whole and the conjugal love is taken as a part vishala a cowherd boy who was attempting to fight with bhadrasena was addressed by another cowherd boy as follows why are you attempting to show your chivalrous spirit before me 
before this you even attempted to fight with sri dharma but you must know that sri dharma does not even care to fight with hundred of balrama so why are you acting so enthusiastic uh, enthusiastically when you actually have no importance at all this is an example of mixture of devotion and fraternity and chivalry the chivalry is taken as the whole and the fraternity is taken as a part ishupala was habituated to call krishna ill names and by his insults he irritated the sense of pandu more than he irritated krishna the pandavas therefore equipped themselves with all kinds of weapon to kill ishupala their feelings were a mixture of ecstatic anger and fraternity the anger being taken as the part, a whole and fraternity as a part when krishna was watching sri dharma very expertly using his stick to fight with balrama who was an expert club fighter and who had even killed the pralambhasura demon which is club when krishna saw balrama finally defeated by sri dharma who was using only a small stick krishna became filled with pleasure and began to look upon sri dharma with a great wonder in this instance there is a mixture of astonishment fraternity and chivalry in devotional service the fraternity and chivalry are considered as part and astonishment is considered as whole expert analysis of these various kinds of mellows instead as that when different mellows overlap one another the mellows that is the whole is the prominent humor is called permanent expression it is confirmed in the vishnu dharmottara that when there are many mellows of devotional ecstasy mixed together the prominent one or the whole is called the steady ecstasy of devotional service although the subordinate mellow may be manifested for a certain time at the length at length it will be become merged into the prominent whole thus it is called the unconstitutional ecstasy of devotional service there is an analogy there is an, a good analogy in this connection showing the relationship between the part and the whole lord vamana deva is actually the supreme personality of godhead but he appeared to have been born as one of the brothers of indra although vamana deva is sometimes taken as a less important demigod he is actually the maintainer of indra the king of the demigods thus although sometimes vamana deva is considered to be a subordinate god his actual position is that of a supreme holy the source of the entire demigod system in the same way arasa which is actually prominent may sometimes appear to be manifested in subordinate way although it is its actual position is as the main or prominent loving feeling of the devotee when an unconstitutional ecstasy of devotional service is manifested prominently at a certain time it is still accepted as a part if it is not very prominently manifested it appears only slightly and more quickly back into the whole at such time of slight appearance no consideration is given to it when one is eating some palatable dishes if one also eats a small blade of grass he will not taste it nor he uh, nor will he care to distinguish that its taste is like hari krishna hari krishna ठीक है क्या मैं रीड दिस चैप्टर माता जी yeah i think a sojanya will read you can read after her okay hari krishna mata ji shall i read mata ji yes for the analysis of mixed rasas as already described if certain kinds of mellows became mixed and there is a joining of up opposite mellows then situation is called incompatible when one is eating sweet rice and something salty or sour is mixed with in the mixture is not very tasteful and it is called incompatible An exemplary instance of incompatibility is a statement by an impersonalist who was lamenting aloud. I have been attached simply to the impersonal Brahman feature, and I have passed my days uselessly in practicing trance. I have not given any proper attention to Sri Krishna, who is the source of 
the impersonal brahman and who is the reservoir of all transcendental pleasures in this statement there are traces of neutrality and conjugal love and the resulting humor is incompatible sometimes it is found in places like vrindavana that a person with a slight devotional attitude of neutral love for krishna may immediately and artificially try to attain to the platform of conjugal love but because of the incompatibility of neutrality and conjugal love the person is found to fall from the standard of devotional service incompatibility was expressed by a great devotee on the platform of neutrality when he sarcastically prayed i am very anxious to see krishna the supreme personality of godhead who is many millions of times more affectionate than the pitas four fathers in the pitraloka and who is always worshiped by the great demigods and goddesses of fortune his body is often marked with the nail pricks of ordinary society girls here is an example of incompatibility due to a mixture of neutrality and high conjugal love there is the following statement by akopi my dear krishna the first thing you should do is just embrace me with your strong arms then my dear friend i shall first smell your head and then i shall enjoy with you this is an example of incompatibility in which conjugal love is the whole and servitorship is the part one devotee said my dear krishna how can i address you as my son when you are addressed by the great vedantas as the absolute truth and by the vaishnavas who follow the principles of narada pancharatra as the supreme personality of god you are this uh, same supreme person so how shall my tongue be so extraordinarily bold as to address you as an ordinary son in the statement there is a mixture of neutrality and parental love and the result is incompatible another devotee said my dear friend my youthful beauty is as temporary as lighting in the sky and therefore my possessing attractively attractive bodily features is unimportant i have never met krishna so i request you to please arrange for my meeting him immediately in this statement there is the incompatibility of neutral mellow mixed with conjugal love a lusty woman in kailasha once told krishna my dear krishna may you have a long life then after saying this she embraced krishna this is an example of incompatibility resulting from a mixture of parental love and conjugal love the purpose of the above analysis is to show that in the mixture of various mellows or reciprocations of ecstatic love between krishna and the devotees if the result is not pure then there will be incompatibility according to the opinion of the stalwart devotees like rupa goswami as soon as there are contradictory feelings the result is uncom- incompatible once an ex- uh, ordinary female devotee addressed krishna my dear boy i know that my body is just a com- composition of flesh and blood and can never be enjoyable to you but still i have been so attracted by your beauty that i wish that you accept me as your conjugal lover in this statement there is incompatibility caused by a mixture of castiness and conjugal love in devotional service Srila Rupa Goswami warns devotees not to commit such incompatibilities in their writings or in their dealings. The presence of such contradictory feelings is called Rasa Bhava, Rasa Bhasha. When there is Rasa Bhasha in any book of Krishna consciousness, no learned scholar or devotee will accept it. In the Vigadha Madhava, second act, verse 17, Paurana Masi tells Nanti Mukhi just how wonderful it is. Great sages meditate upon Krishna after being relieved from all the material transactions. and with great difficulty they try to situate krishna in their hearts and opposed to this uh, this young girl is trying to withdraw her mind from krishna so that she can apply it in the material activities of sense gratification what a regrettable thing it is that this girl is trying to drive away from her heart the same krishna who is sought after by great sages through severe austerities and perseverance although in this statement there are contradictory mellows of ecstatic devotion the result is not incompatible because the conjugal love is so elevated that it is defeating all other varieties of mellows Sri Lajiva Goswami comments in this connection that such a loving state of mind is not possible for all. It is possible only in the case of gopis of Vrindavana. There are many other instances or of contradictory mellows where there is no perseverance experience of Rasa Bhasha. Once some minor demigod of the heavenly planets remarked Krishna, whose joking words were once the source of so much laughter for the residents of Raja, has now been attacked by the serpent king Kalya. and he has become the object of everyone's overwhelming lamentation in this instance there is a mixture of laughter and compassion but there is no incompatibility because by both of these rasas the loving affection for krishna is increased shrimati radharani was once told that although she had stopped all activities she was the sup- she was still the supreme source of inspiration for all kinds of devotional service the statement says my dear radharani in separation from krishna you are now as still as the most beautiful tree whose gracefulness is not blocked by any covering of the leaves your tranquil mood makes you appear to be completely merged in brahman realization in this example there is a mixture of conjugal love and neutral love but the conjugal love has surpassed everything actually brahman realization is only a standard existence 
there is the following statement by krishna himself shrimati radha rani has become a peace personified for me because of her i now go without sleep i stay constantly without blinking my eyes and i'm always in a meditative mode because of her i have even made my home in the cave of a mountain this is an example of conjugal love mixed with neutral love but there is no incompatibility the following is a conversation consisting of questions put before rambha a celebrated beautiful woman and her corresponding answers rambha was asked my dear rambha who are you she answered i am a peace personified question then why are you in this sky answer i am the i am in the sky to experience the supreme absolute truth question then why are you staring answer just to look into the supreme beauty of the absolute truth question then why do you appear to be disturbed in mind answer because cupid is acting in the above example there is no poetic representation of melos because of the whole the ecstasy of conjugal love has exceeded the neutral position of the devotional service in the 10th canto of shrimad bhagavatam 60 Verse forty-five. To finish, David said, "My dear husband, a woman who has no taste for the transcendental pleasure available from your personal contact must be inclined to accept as her husband somebody who is in, who is externally a combination of moustache, beard, body hairs, finger nails, and some beard hair. And within him there are muscles, bones, blood, intestinal worms, stool, mucus, bile, and similar things. Actually, such a husband is only a dead body. But due to not being attracted to your transcendental form, a woman will have accept this combination of stools and urine for her husband." the statement which lists the ingredients of a material body is not perverted mellow in transcendental realization because it shows correct discrimination between matter and spirit in the vigada madhava second act verse 31 krishna tells his friend my dear friend what a wonderful thing is that it is that since i have been since i have seen the beautiful uh, lotus eyes of shrimati radha rani i have developed a tendency to spit on the moon and the lotus flower this is an example of conjugal love mixed with castliness but there is no incompatibility The following is a statement that describes different mellows of devotional service. Although Krishna was invisible to any enemy, the cowherd boys of Vrindavana became almost blackish with astonishment upon seeing his wonderful royal garments and his fighting feats on the party field of Kurukshetra. In this statement, although there is a mixture of chivalrous activities and red in devotional service, there is no poverty reflection of mellows. One resident of Mathura requested her father to bolt the doors and then go with, uh, go with, and then go with her to the school of Sandipani Muni to find Krishna. she complained that krishna had completely stolen her mind in this incident there is a mixture of conjugal love and parental love but there is no incompatibility a brahmanandi impersonalist expressed his desire as follows when shall i be able to see the supreme personality of godhead who is eternal bliss and knowledge whose chest has become smeared with red kumkuma powder by touching the breast of rukmini here there is a mixture of conjugal love and neutrality although this is a contradiction of melos there is no incompatibility because even a brahm a brahmanandi will become attracted to krishna nanda maharaja told his wife my dear yashoda although your son krishna is delicate and soft as the mallika flower he has gone to kill the keshi demon who is strong as a mountain therefore i have become a little disturbed but never mind all auspiciousness to my son i shall raise this hand which is as strong as a pillar and i shall kill the keshi demon just to give him freedom from all anxieties to the inhabitants of rajamandala In this statement, there are two kinds of mellows, chivalry mm-hmm. and red. Both of them, however, improve the position of parental love, and therefore there is no incompatibility. In the Lalita Madhava of Sri Lalu Pogoswami, it is stated, after Krishna's arrival in Kamsa's arena, Kamsa's priest looked at Krishna with a detestable expression. The entire arena was filled with dread on the part of Kamsa, and his priest and restless expressions of pleasure on the cheeks of Krishna's friends. Frustration was felt by his envious rivals, the great mm-hmm. sages meditated hot tears were in the eyes of devaki and other motherly ladies and hair stood on the bodies of the expert war- warriors there was astonishment in the hearts of demigods such as indra the servants danced and the restless eyes of all the young girls glanced about in this statement there is a description of combination of different mellows but there is no incompatibility a similar statement which is free from incompatibility is in the lalita madhava wherein the author blesses all the readers of the book in the following manner Although the supreme personality of Godhead is able to lift a mountain with a finger of his left hand, he is always humble and meek. He is always very kind to his loving devotees. He has frustrated Indra's attempt at vengeance by refusing him the sacrifice of Indra Yagna. He is the cause of all pleasure to the young girls. May he be ever compassionate upon all, upon you all. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Madhavi, may I read the next chapter? Yes, this is the final one. Okay, Hare Krishna. Perverted expression of mellow. 
the rasha bhasha or incompatible mixtures of melodies may be classified as uparasa false expression anurasa intimation and aksara perverted or misrepresented melodies there is a following statement by an impersonalist who had just seen krishna when a person has passed completely from all contamination of material existence he relishes a transcendental bliss of being established in trance but as soon as i saw you the original personality of godhead i experienced the same bliss the perverted reflection of melos is called santa uparasa or a perverted uh, reflection of mixed impersonalism and personalism here there is another statement as follows wherever i am glancing i uh, i simply see your personality therefore i know that you are the contained uh, uncontaminated bhagwan effulgent and the supreme cause of all causes i think that there is nothing but you in this cosmic manifestation this is another example of uparasa or a perverted reflection of impersonalism and personalism when madhu mangala an intimate intimate friend of krishna was dancing before krishna in a joking manner no one was paying attention to him and he jokingly said my dear lord please be merciful upon me i am praying for your mercy this is an example of uparasa in fraternal affection and neutrality kamsa once mother ke guru ko kamsa kamsa once addressed his sister devaki as follows my dear sister having seen your dear son krishna i think that he is so strong that he can kill even if wrestlers are strong as the mountain so i will have no more anxieties about him even if he is engaged in a terrible fight this is an instance of uparasa in a perverted reflection of parental love in the lalita madhava shila rupa goswami says the wise of yajna the wise of uh, yajni ka brahmanas were all young girls and they were attracted to krishna the same way as the gopis of vrindavana out of the attraction they disturbed they distributed food to krishna here the two devotional melodies are conjugal love and parental love and the result is called uparasha in conjugal love one of the friends of shrimati radha rani told her my dear friend gandhar gandhar vika radha rani you were the most uh, chaste girl in our village but now you have divided yourself and are partially chaste and partially unchaste it is all due to cupid's influence upon you after you saw krishna and heard the sound of his flute this is there is another example uparasha caused by undivided interest in conjugal love according to some expert uh, learned scholars the feelings between lover and beloved create create perverted reflections of melo in many ways gopis have become purified by krishna's glance and as such cupid's influence is distinctly visible on their bodies although in the material sense the glancing of a boy at a girl is a kind of pollution but when krishna threw his transcendent glance at the gopis they became purified so in other words because krishna is the absolute truth any action by him is transcendently pure after krishna chastised the kaliya naga in the yamuna river by dancing on his head The Kaliya Nagas why we did Krishna my dear cowherd boy we are all we are only young wives of the Kaliya Naga so why do you agitate our minds by sounding your flute Kaliya's wives were flattering Krishna so that he would spare their husband therefore there is an example of uparasha of false expression one devotee said my dear gobinda here is a nice flowery bush in in kailasha i am a young girl and you are a young poetic boy after this what more can i say you just consider this is an example of uparasha caused by impudence in conjugal love when narada muni was passing to vrindavana he came to the bhandiga vana forest and saw 
in one of the teens the famous uh, parrot couple that that always accompanies lord uh, krishna the the couple was intimating some discussion that they heard up, uh, upon the vedanta philosophy and and thus were seemingly arguing about various philosophical points upon seeing this narada muni was struck with wonder and he became and he began to stare without moving his eyelids this is an example of anurasha or imitation when krishna was fleeing from the battle field from a distant place jayasandha was watching him with restless eyes and was feeling very proud being as puffed with his conquest he was repeatedly repeatedly laughing this is an example of aparasha everything in connection with krishna is called a static devotional love although it may be exhibited in different ways sometimes in the right order and sometimes as a perverted reflection according to the op- opinion of all expert devotees anything that will arouse a static love for krishna is taken as an impetus for transcendental mellow mellow hari krishna hari krishna Can I read, Mataji? Yes. Concluding words. Sri La Rupa Goswami concludes by saying that Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu is very difficult for ordinary men, ordinary men to understand. Yet he hopes that Lord Krishna, the eternal super supreme personality of Godhead, will be pleased with his presentation of this book. By rough calculation, it is estimated that Sri La Rupa Goswami. finished shri bhakti rasamrita sindhu in goloka vrindavan in the year 1552 while physically present shri la rupa goswami was living in different parts of vrindavan and his headquarters were in the temple of radha damodara in the present city of vrindavan the place of uh, rupa goswami's ba- um, bhajana his execution of devotional service is commemorated com- still There are two different tomb-like structures at the Ra- at the Radha Damodara Temple. One structure is called his place of bhajana, and other his body and other his body is entombed. Behind this very tomb, I have my place of bhajana, but since nineteen sixty-five, I have been away. The place, however, is being taken care of my uh, of by my disciples. By Krishna will, I am now residing at the Los Angeles Temple of the International Society of Krishna Consciousness. This purport is finished today, the thirtieth June of nineteen sixty nine. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Okay, we have completed N O D. Um. After NOD, what do we have, Mataji? Ishopanishad. Okay. Mataji, whether I won't be having a Brahma Samhita. How many other eighteen slokas are there? Okay. Yes, Mataji. We require two days more because of these Ekadashi. We skip classes now. Two, but I think it will be covered. No, per week I think six is enough. In three weeks we can complete. Yes, but uh, again, the length of the chapter matters, no? Oh, that we'll see now. Yeah. Ah, uh, Mata ji. Ah. Ah, uh, so each Lokash, ah, uh, will be will be read the translation purport and uh, the shloka also, like how we did in Bhagavad Gita. Yes, yes. Okay. Mata ji. Mata ji, may I read? Shlokash, Nisho, Panishad, and purport will be small only, Mata ji. I refer all eighteen shlokas are. Uh, Let's we could complete in uh, two or three days. Yeah, that's what. Ah, uh, Mata ji, are we having any compensation class this week for uh, Saturday? What do you say? Shall we do it? Yes, Mata ji. Um, uh, shall we do it at eight p.m. in uh, um something like Friday? If everybody is joining. I will also join. No problem. Yes, Mata ji. But I no think problem. we'll. We'll be able to complete it. Uh, we need not take any extra composition classes. Also, Saturday Sunday is okay, Mother. Yeah, that's what. Uh, I think one more Ekadashi is falling on Sunday. Yeah, tenth uh, next month, tenth uh, July. Hmm. 
so i think uh, uh, it's enough i think we'll see afterwards we have uh, 10 minutes remaining mataji shall we wish that the ishopnishad see your wish you can do one shloka today yes, yes mataji mata could start <laughs> okay if you mataji may i read the first before, no see before uh, today we can read only introduction no shloka reading and uh, before we proceed on further i just wanted to uh, each one of you to tell a gist point what exactly we have discussed today uh, about the conjugal uh, love matlab ecstasy some... different ecstasy what are the uh, um, what do you say uh, rasas different different rasas what Masa. is compatible Masa. what is incompatible what Masa. exactly okay so incompatible is pretending to be a devotee of the lord pretending to be attracted to krishna by showing different rasas so, namely vatsalya rasa sakya rasa uh, so uh, sakya rasa madhurya rasa uh, that's all i know but the, how you fake your affection towards krishna like uh, like like i've just read uh, the kaliyas why young wives of kaliya how they were pretending to be a devotee of krishna just to spare the spare their husband uh, kaliya from his from killing so in the hands of krishna and an old lady who was attracted by krishna's beauty wanted uh, but was pretending to be a devotee and, and was uh, uh, you know presenting the conjugal love yeah somebody else can give examples Uh, yes mother ji so today we started with uh, these all rasas namely there are five direct rasas which are the parental love conjugal love then servitude fraternity and the friendship so these are the ones which are in the vaikuntha goloka and in the spiritual sky whereas there are other seven indirect rasas which uh, are seen in the material world and we saw the various compatibility and incompatibility of these different rasas in the material world okay next mata ji and vatsalya rasa the fake uh, portrayal of vatsalya rasa was shown by kamsa when he was describing krishna's qualities to 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 mother devaki that is an so powerful that, that even i cannot kill uh, krishna he can kill all the demons so he was speaking of the the parent love that was incompatible so so basically conjugal love is uh, is basically devotion towards the lord by, by surrendering towards his lotus feet yeah. okay fine hare krishna i think each each one of you can read one one paragraph we'll start with introduction okay mata ji shall i start yes introduction teachings of the vedas delivered as a lecture by his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami prabhu pada on october 6 1969 at conway hall london england ladies and gentlemen today's subject matter is the teachings of vedas what are the vedas the sanskrit verbal root of the of veda can be interpreted variously but the purport is finally one veda means knowledge any knowledge you accept is veda for the teachings of the veda are the original knowledge in the conditioned state our knowledge is subjected to many deficiencies the difference between the conditioned soul and a liberated soul is that the conditioned soul has four kinds of defects the first defect is that he must commit mistakes for example in our country mahatma gandhi was considered to be a very great personality but he committed many mistakes even at the last stage of his life his assistant warned mahatma gandhi don't go to the new delhi meeting i have some friends and i have heard there is danger but he did not hear 
he persisted in going and was killed even great personalities like mahatma gandhi president kennedy there are so many of them made mistakes to err is human this is one defect of the conditioned soul yeah. next बॉडी एज इफ आई आस्क यू वॉट यू आर यू विल से आई एम मिस्टर जॉन आई एम अच मैन आई एम दिस आई एम दैट all these are bodily identification but you are not this body this is illusion should i get the next paragraph yes the third defect is a cheating propensity everyone has a propensity to cheat others although a person is fool number 1 he poses himself as very intelligent although it is already pointed out that he is an illusion and makes mistakes he will Theo guys i think it is this this is this but he does not even know that his own, know his own position he writes books of philosophy although he, he is defective this is that is his disease this, this is cheating lastly our senses are imperfect we are proud of our uh, of our eyes often someone will challenge can you show me god but do you have the eyes to see god you will never see if you if you haven't the eye if immediately the room becomes dark you cannot even see your hand so what is so what power do you have to see we cannot therefore expect knowledge with the veda with these imperfect senses madhu ji am i audible yes with all these deficiencies in conditional life conditioned life we cannot give perfect knowledge to anyone nor are we ourselves perfect therefore we accept the vedas as they are yes next hey i mata ji yes dikshit hari krishna you may call the vedas hindu but hindu is a poor enemy we are not hindus our real identification is varnashrama varnashrama denotes the followers of the vedas those who accept the human society in eight divisions of varna and ashrama there are four divisions of society and four divisions of spiritual life this is called varna ashrama it is stated in the bhagavad gita that these divisions are everywhere because they are created by god the divisions of society are brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra brahmana refers to the very intelligent class of men those who know that what is brahman similarly the kshatriyas the administrative group are the next intelligent class of men then the vaishyas the mercantile group these national classifications are found everywhere this is the vedic principle and we accept it vedic principles are accepted as a axiomatic rule to for there uh, cannot be any mistake that is acceptance for instance in india kaudang is accepted as pure and yet kaudang is a tool of an animal in one place you will find the vedic uh, injunction that if you touch tool you have to take bath immediately but in other in, uh, but in other place it is said that the tool of a cow is pure if you smear kaudang is an impure place uh, that place becomes pure with your ordinary sense we can argue this is contradictory actually it's contradictory from the ordinary point of view but it is not false in fact in calcutta a very prominent scientist and doctor analyzed kaudang and uh, found that it contains all antiseptic properties can i read the next one mata ji yes in india if one person tells another you must do this the other party may say so uh, what do you mean is this uh, is this a vedic injunction that i have to follow you without any argument vedic injunctions cannot be interpreted but ultimately if you carefully study why these injunctions are there you will find that they are they are all correct the vedas are not complication complications of human knowledge veda knowledge comes from the spiritual world from lord krishna Another name for Veda is Shruti. Ma, today you can scroll up. Yeah, Shruti refers to that knowledge which is acquired by hearing. It is not experimental knowledge. Shruti is considered to be like a mother. We take so much knowledge from our mother. For example, if you want to know who your father is, 
who can answer you your mother if your mother says here is your father you have to accept it it is not possible to experiment to find out whether he is your father similarly if you want to know uh, something beyond your experience beyond your experimental knowledge beyond the activity of the senses then you have to accept the vedas there is no question of experimenting it has already been experimented it, it is already settled the version of the mother for instance has to be accepted as truth there is no other way hari krishna hari krishna so the vedas the vedas are considered to be the mother and brahma is called the grandfather the forefather because he was the first to be instructed in the vedic knowledge in the beginning the first living creature was brahma he received this vedic knowledge and imparted it to narada and other disciples and sons they and they also distributed it to their disciples in this way the vedic knowledge comes down by reciprocal succession it is also confirmed in bhagavad gita that vedic knowledge is understood in this way if you make experimental endeavor you come to the same conclusion but just to save time you should accept if you want to know who your father is and if you accept your mother as the authority then whatever she says can be accepted without argument there are three kinds of evidence pratyaksha anumana and shabda pratyaksha means direct evidence direct evidence is not very good because our senses are not perfect we are seeing the sun daily and it appears to us just like a small disk but it is actually far far larger than many understand many planets of what value is the same therefore we have to read books then we can understand about the sun so direct experience is not perfect then there is anumana inductive knowledge it is it may be like this hypothesis for instance darwin's theory says it may be like this it may be like that but this is that is not science that is a suggestion and it is also not perfect but if you receive the knowledge from the authoritative sources that is perfect if you receive a program guide from the radio station authorities you accept it you don't deny it you don't have to make an experiment because it is received from the authoritative source so let's continue matters yes <laughs> vedic knowledge is called shabda pramana another name is shruti shruti means that this knowledge has to be received simply by oral deception the vedas instruct that in order to understand the transcendental knowledge we have to hear from the authority transcendental knowledge is knowledge from beyond this universe within this universe is material knowledge and beyond this universe is transcendental knowledge we cannot even go to the end of the universe so how can we go to the spiritual world Thus, to acquire full knowledge is impossible. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. There is a spiritual side. There is another nature which is beyond manifestation and non-manifestation. But how will you know that there is a sky where the planets and inhabitants are eternal? All this knowledge is there, but how will you make experiments? It is not possible. Therefore. You have to take the essence of the Veda. This is called Vedic knowledge. In our Krishna conscious movement, we are accepting knowledge from the highest authority, Krishna. Krishna is accepted as the highest authority by all classes of men. I am speaking first of the two classes of transcendentalists. One class of transcendentalists is called impersonalistic Mayavadi. They are generally known as Vedantists, led by Shankar Chaya. There is another class of uh, transcendentalists uh, called Vaishnavas like Raman, Raman Nujacharya, Madhavacharya and Vishnu Swami. Both the Shankar, Shankara Sampradaya and Vaishnava Sampradaya have accepted Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Shankar Chaya is supposed to be an impersonalist who preached impersonalism, impersonal Brahman, So, but it is a fact that he is a covert personalist. In this commentary on the Bhagavad Gita, he wrote, Narayana, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is beyond this cosmic manifestation. And then again, he is confirmed that the uh, Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayana, is Krishna. Adhaji, am I audible? Yes. He has come as the son of Devaki and Vasudeva. He particularly mentioned the names of his father and mother. So Krishna is accepted as the supreme personality of Godhead by all transcendentalists. There is no doubt about it. A source of knowledge in Krishna consciousness is the Bhagavad Gita, which comes directly from Krishna. We have published Bhagavad Gita as it is because we accept Krishna as he is speaking. without any interpretation that is vedic knowledge 
since the basic knowledge is pure and we accept it, however, Krishna says we accept. This is Krishna consciousness. That saves much time. If you accept the right authority or source of knowledge, then you save much time. For example, there are two systems of knowledge in the material world, inductive and deductive. From deductive, you accept the man is mortal. Your father says man is mortal. Your sister says man is mortal. mortal. Everyone says man is mortal, but you do not explain it. You accept it as a fact that man is mortal. If you want to research to find out whether man is mortal, you have to study each and every man and you may come to think that there may be some man who is not dying, but you have not seen him yet. So in, this, so in this way, your research will never be finished. In Sanskrit, this process is called aroha, the ascending process. If you want to attain knowledge by any personal interviewer, by exercising your imperfect senses, you will never come to the right conclusion. That is not possible. Just... Next, next. Somebody... Hare Krishna, can... Mataji, may I? Yes, Dikshit. Hare Krishna. There is a statement at the Brahma Samhita. Just ride on the airplane which turns at the speed of mind. Or material airplanes can run 2,000 miles per hour. But what is the speed of mind? You are sitting at home, you immediately think of India. Say so, yeah, 10,000 miles away. And at once, it is in your home. Your mind has gone there. The mind speed is so swift. Therefore, it is stated. If you travel at the speed for millions of years, you will find that the spiritual guy is unlimited. It is not possible even to approach it. Therefore, the Vedic injunction uh, is that one must approach the word is used upon the five spiritual master, the guru. And what is the qualification of a spiritual master? He is one who has rightly heard the basic message from the right source. And he must practically be firmly established in Brahman. These are two qualities he must have. Otherwise, he is not bona fide. Master, can I continue? Continue. This Krishna consciousness movement is completely authorized from uh, Vedic principles. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says the actual aim of Vedic research is to find out Krishna. In the Brahma Samhita, it is also stated, Krishna, Govinda has innumerable forms, but they are all one. They are not like our forms which are fallible. His form is infallible. My form has a beginning. His form has no beginning. It is Ananta and his form, so many multiforms, has no end. My form is sitting there and not in any apartment. You are sitting there and not in your apartment. But Krishna can be everywhere at one time. He can sit down in Kolok, Kovrindavana. And at the same time, he is everywhere, all pervading. He original, the oldest. But uh, whenever you look at the picture of Krishna, you will find a young boy, 15 or 20 years old. You will never find an old man. You have seen pictures of Krishna as a charity from the Bhagavad Gita. In the time, he was not less than 100 years old. He had great grandchildren, but he looked just a boy. Krishna, God, never becomes old. That is his supreme power. And if you want to search of Krishna by studying the Vedic literature, then you will be battled. It may be possible, but it is very difficult. But you can very easily learn about him from his devotee. His devotee can deliver him to you. Here is he taken. That is the potency of Krishna's devotees. Mataji, can I? Yes. Originally, there was only one Veda. And there was no necessity of reading it. People were so intelligent and had such sharp memories that, once, that by once hearing from the lips of the spiritual master, they would understand they would immediately grasp the whole purpose. But 5,000 years ago, Vyasadeva put the Vedas in writing for the people in this age, Kali Yuga. He knew that eventually people would be short-lived, their memories would be very poor, and their intelligence would not be very sharp. Therefore, let me teach this Vedic knowledge in writing. He divided the Vedas into four, Rig, Sam, Atharva, and Yajur. Then he gave the charge of these Vedas to his different disciples. He then thought of the less intelligent class of men, Sri Shudra and Vijabandhu. He considered the woman class and the Shudra class, worker class and Vijabandhu. Vijabandhu refers to those who are born in a high family but who are not properly qualified. A man who is born in the family of Brahmanas, but is not qualified as a Brahmana, is called Vijabandhu. For these persons, he compiled the Mahabharata called the History of India and the 18 Puranas. These are all parts of the Vedic literature, the Puranas, the Mahabharata, the Veda, 
uh, the four Vedas and the Upanishads. And uh, the Upanishads are a part of the Vedas. Then Vyasadeva summarized all Vedic knowledge for scholars and philosophers in what is called the Vedanta Sutra. This is the last word of the Vedas. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Next. Hare Krishna, Mataji. May I read? Yes. Vyasadeva personally wrote the Vedanta Sutra under the instructions of Narada, his guru, Maharaja, spiritual master, but still he was not satisfied. That is a long story described in Srimad Bhagavatam. Veda Vyasa was not very satisfied even after compiling many Puranas and Upanishads and even after writing the Vedanta Sutra. Then his spiritual master Narada instructed him, You explain the Vedanta Sutra. Vedanta means ultimate knowledge and the ultimate knowledge is Krishna. Krishna says that throughout all the Vedas, one has to understand him. Vedas, uh, Vedas to survive Aham Eva Vedaya. Krishna also says, Vedanta Krit Veda with Eva Chaham. I am the compiler of Vedanta Sutra and I am the knower of the Vedas. Therefore, the ultimate objective is Krishna. That is explained in all the Vaishnava commentaries on Vedanta philosophy. We Gaudiya Vaishnavas have our commentary on Vedanta philosophy called Govinda Bhashya by Baladeva Vibhya, Vidya Bhushana. Similarly, Ramanuja Charya has a commentary and Madhva Charya has one. The version of Shankaracharya is not the only commentary. There are many Vedanta commentaries, but because the Vaishnavas did not present the first Vedanta commentary, people are under the wrong impression that Shankaracharya is the only Vedanta commentary. Besides that, Bhagavatam begins with the first words of Vedanta Sutra, Janmai, Janmadai Asya Yataha, and Janmada, Janmadai Asya Yataha is fully explained in Srimad Bhagavatam. The Vedanta Sutra simply hints at what is Brahman, the absolute truth. The absolute truth is that from whom everything emanates. This is a summary, but it is explained in detail in Srimad Bhagavatam. If everything is emanating from the absolute truth, then what is the nature of the absolute truth? That is explained in Srimad Bhagavatam. The absolute truth must be consciousness. He is self-effulgent, Swarat. We develop our consciousness and the uh, knowledge by receiving knowledge from others. But for him, it is said that he is self effulgent The whole summary of Vedic knowledge is Vedanta Sutra and the Vedanta Sutra is explained by the writer himself in Srimad Bhagavatam. We finally request those who are actually after Vedic knowledge to try to understand the explanation of all Vedic knowledge from Srimad Bhagavatam and the Bhagavad Gita. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. okay. Shall we do it next week? Yes. Yes, okay. fresh, isn't it? Then starts the first sloka. Okay, somebody can conclude by saying the Narsi Marti. Okay, Mataji, may I? Rachita, please continue. Namaste, Narsingaya. Paladadayai Niranya Kashi Purvakshaha Silatankana Kharai Ito Nasinga Parato Nasinga Yato Yato Yami Tato Nasinga Bahir Nasinga Vidaye Nasinga Nasinga Papade Charanam Papadim Tavakarakamalavahe Jayo Narsingh Dev, Jayo Narsingh Dev, Jayo Narsingh Dev, Jayo Narsingh Dev, Jayo Palat Narsingh Jayo, Palat Narsingh Jayo, Palat Narsingh Jayo, Palat Narsingh Jayo, Jayo Prabhu Pan, Prabhu Pan, Prabhu Pan, Jayo Jayo Prabhu Pan, Patita Pavan Prabhu Pan, Prabhu Pan. 
जय 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 प्रभु पाद प्रहलाद नरसिंह सिंह देव की जय प्रहलाद महाराज की जय नरसिंह भग, देव भगवान की जय हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा वंचा कल्पत रूप्य कृपा सिंधु पतिताभ्यो वैष्णवभ्यो नमो नम थैंक यू कोस्ट एंड पार्टिसिपेंट सी ऑल नेक्स्ट वीकेंड हरे कृष्णा